Jada and Stitches show and happy Halloween! <laughs> this week we have a crochet trick for you that you can fill full of treats. I love to make little, little bags, little sacks, little treat bags this time of year. This one is made using our favorite falling leaves stitch. You can make it in one color, you can make it in two colors, you can carry the colors so you don't have to snip your yarn every row. I'll explain that a little bit more in the video. Or you can make it in three colors like this charming little candy corn inspired one here. This is the one I'm going to make today so I'll show you how you can cut and change colors. I'll explain carrying colors and of course I'll tell you how you can make it using all one color too. So let's grab our hooks, grab our scraps, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a little treat bag together. Our little treat bags are a real scrap project. You only need around 30 yards of yarn per bag. You can use any fiber you want. I've got acrylic here today. And you can use size three lightweight DK weight yarn, a size four medium weight yarn, a size five chunky bulky weight yarn. It's really anything you've got lying around. And you can also really play with the hook. I'm using a size six millimeter today. That's also known as a J, but you can use any hook that you feel is comfortable with the yarn you've chosen. Keeping in mind that the lighter weight yarn and the smaller hooks will create a slightly smaller bag and the thicker weight and the larger hooks will create a slightly larger bag. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and a little bit of ribbon so that you can tie your little bag shut. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. We're going to start with a slip knot on our hook and we're going to chain 12. Once you have 12 chains, we're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the next one and half double crochet three times into it. So this is one side of the bottom of the bag. Then we're going to half double crochet into each of the next nine chains. So one half double crochet per chain. And once you've half double crocheted into each of those next nine chains, that leaves you with one at the end, you're going to half double crochet into that last chain three times. And this is going to be the other side of the bottom of the bag. Now I'm going to work over top of my short tail. You can weave it in later if you feel comfortable. But now we're going to work back across the underside of that foundation chain row. So our last half double crochet was worked into this larger space. That's the one that sits under here. There's three of them there. You're going to half double crochet into each of the middle nine chains. So you're half double crocheting into the bottom of each of those middle nine half double crochets that you put in between each edge. So you've got the little three half double crochet kind of corners. There's two corners. That's either side of the bottom of the bag. And then you've got nine half double crochets in between on each side. So you have sort of a front and a back and two side edges. And once you've half double crocheted into those nine chains, that brings you back to the first three that you made. Find the first half double crochet, get your hook in underneath it, and slip stitch to join. There we go. And that is the bottom of your bag. So you see you've got sort of a rounded edge here and a rounded edge there. All right, we're going to start the falling leaves stitch now. We're going to chain one. The chain one doesn't count as anything, it just brings us up to the right height and into the same place where we joined, so right underneath it, you're going to single crochet and two double crochet all into the same place. So our little leaf is a single crochet and two double crochet all worked into the same stitch. Then you skip the next two stitches, find the next stitch, that's number three, and single crochet and two double crochet into it. So single crochet, two double crochet, that is a little leaf. And that will have kind of pulled up the corner of your bag. So now you've got sort of an edge happening. 
skip the next two, find the third stitch, and single crochet two double crochet into it. You're going to repeat this single crochet two double crochet into every third stitch all the way around, and that will bring you back to the beginning. When you've gotten all the way back around, you'll have finished your last little leaf. You've got two actual stitches left, and then this little guy here, which is the false stitch. And you can see that chain one that we began the row with comes out of it. Sometimes we use the false stitch, but in this case we're going to skip it. Instead, you're going to look for that first single crochet you made, and you're going to slip stitch to join. You'll have eight little leaves all the way around, three on each side and one on either end, and you can just sort of poke the bottom of your bag out. So now you've got two distinct sides and two distinct edges. And from here on out, it's mostly just the falling leaves stitch. We chain one and turn at the end of every row, and if you're not changing colors, this is all you're going to do. Chain one, turn, and then you're going to start a little leaf right where you left off. So you see, if you pull up a little bit, there's that space where you joined. You're going to start your first single crochet and two double crochets right into that spot. And so every row goes in the opposite direction from the row before. Then you skip over two stitches, which will be double crochets from the previous row. Find the third stitch, so same thing, skip two, work a little leaf into the third stitch, but that third stitch will always be a single crochet from the previous row. So if you get a little lost, just pull back and make sure that you're working your little leaves into a single crochet stitch from the previous row. Skip two, those are double crochets. Little leaf into the third, that will be a single crochet. And you repeat that all the way around. Once you've finished your eighth little leaf, you skip the last two stitches, which were double crochets, and that brings you back to that first single crochet that began the row. Now, if you have trouble identifying this, because working in the round can sometimes get a little confusing, you can mark the first single crochet of your row. I'm going at this the wrong way. There we go. You can mark the first single crochet in a row with a stitch marker so that you know for sure that that's the first stitch when you get back around to it. And that is the first three rows. There's our bottom and then two rows of the falling leaves stitch. So the one row leans one way, the other row leans the other way. So that's an easy way to count. One, two. I'm finished with yellow. I am going to snip my yarn and fasten off. If you were going to do a alternating row color, like this little bag, you would just drop the yarn. Drop the yarn, and then you would join the next color, and when you got around to the end of the row, you would just make sure that that yarn was pulled to the inside of the bag before you used it again. So you would just make sure that it was sort of kept to the inside. And then as you work over top, you can drop another yarn, pick it up further on, and that would just run the colors up the inside edge of the bag. But today, I'm only going to use each color once, and I find it easier to just snip the yarn, fasten off. And if carrying colors is a bit tricky, then you don't have to um, carry them. You can also just snip the yarn, fasten off, and then pick up the yarn color again by using a slip stitch to join if you want to stripe the old-fashioned way. And if you're not changing colors at all, don't cut your yarn, just chain one, turn your work, and start the leaf stitch going in the opposite direction. So you're always chain one, turn, leaf stitch in the opposite direction. I am going to join my orange yarn now. Start with a slip knot on my hook. I'm going to join my yarn in the same place that I fastened off. So I want that single crochet that I joined in. If I wasn't changing colors, I would have just joined my row, chained one, turn, and I would be working the little leaf pattern all the way back in the other direction. So I want to go in that same direction but I'm going to join my yarn on the front because that's the direction I'm going in. So slip stitch to join. I'll tuck my little tails to the inside and I will take care of them later. Chain one to begin the row. I'm going in this direction and I start my little leaf. So into the same place that I joined, single crochet 
and two double crochets. It might be a little tight, so just take your time. And then the pattern is the same. Skip two stitches. They should be double crochets. That's another way you know you're going in the right direction. Third stitch will be a single crochet and you work a little leaf, single crochet, two double crochet into that. And then you just repeat the pattern all the way around. At the end of the row, you've worked your last or eighth little leaf skip the last two stitches, they will be double crochets, and you find that first single crochet that you made and join the row. If you're changing colors, you can fasten off. Make sure you turn because now you're going to be going back the other direction. Join your yarn, chain one, and continue. Or if you're not changing colors, I'm not. Chain one, turn, and in the same place that you joined, so that little single crochet, you single crochet, two double crochets all into the same stitch. Skip two stitches, find the next stitch, and repeat. So your chain one turn for every single row, whether you are changing colors or not. Always begin the row with a little chain one because that chain one just gets you up to the right height. Then you single crochet, two double crochet in the very same stitch that you chained one out of or that you joined your color in if you're changing colors. I'm going to work this row and two more rows in orange. So chain one turn at the end of every row and then I'm going to change colors again to white. So I'll catch up with you then. I have just finished four rows of the orange and I'm just Remember to reverse rows or reverse directions every time you change or finish a row. And I've got my first row, second row, third row, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So you kind of see that little leaf pattern kind of zigzagging all the way up. That's it for my orange. I'm going to snip my yarn, fasten off. Again, if you were not changing colors, you would just chain one, turn, and keep going backwards. We've got one more row of the falling leaf stitch to work before we work our little motif row or our open work row that's going to allow us to weave a drawstring through it. So I'm going to switch to my white now. And I don't need very much of this. All right. Slip knot on my hook. Pick up my hook, and or my, my little thing here. There we go, that's where I finished off. And I joined going in this direction, which means I want to turn it, because I'm going in the other direction now, so that's one way to know. And that is the single crochet that I joined in. So I'm going to join my new color in the same place with a slip knot, and I'll tuck that little tail to the inside. Chain one, just as though I had not changed colors at all, and begin my little leaf. Single crochet, two double crochet into the same place. Of course, I'm going in the other direction. Uh, this is, you're still changing directions every row. And if you're confused, the next two stitches that you skip should be double crochets. And if they're not, then you're going in the wrong direction. <laughs> so skip two, single crochet, two double crochet in the next stitch. One more row of this little falling leaf pattern and then we will make our drawstring row. That is the end of my first row of white. This is the eighth row of the pattern. So there's row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now we're going to put in a little open work row. So we're still gonna chain one and turn and we're going to single crochet in the same place that we joined, so into that same single crochet, just like you were starting the falling leaf stitch all over again. But instead of making two double crochets, you're going to chain two. Skip two stitches, they'll still be double crochets. Find the third, it will still be a single crochet, and single crochet into it. Chain two, skip two, find the next stitch, and single crochet into it. Chain two, skip two, single crochet, and that's the open work row all the way around.
once you've worked a single crochet two chains skip two single crochet all the way around you'll see that you've got this nice big eyelet row happening chain your last two skip your last two stitches find the single crochet you began the row with and join with a slip stitch we have one more row of the falling leaf stitch to go so we chain one turn if you're changing colors remember you just fasten off Join your new color with a slip stitch in the same place that you fastened off and single crochet into that same single crochet but we're into the falling leaves again so two double crochet into that same stitch there we go skip the chain two space find the next single crochet and work a little leaf into it single crochet two double crochet and you're going to work a little leaf into every little single crochet all the way around you're skipping the chain two space and you will still have eight little leaves at the end of this row at the end of that row you want to find that first single crochet you made sneak your hook into it and slip stitch to join and that is the bag you can snip your yarn, fasten off, flip the bag inside out so you can find all those little short tails and weave them in. So fasten off, flip it inside out. You'll have all these little tails all down the edge here. And you want to take a moment to weave them all in with your yarn needle. Now if you were carrying colors, you will find that they've all got a nice line all the way up the inside of your bag, which of course won't show because it'll be on the inside, but you'll still have a couple of little tails to weave in. So make sure you go ahead and do that. Once your tails are all woven in, you can flip your bag back out, right side out, like I have here. And now we're going to weave our little ribbon closure in through those little eyelets. So cut yourself a length of ribbon. I like to kind of cut a length and then maybe double that, that I know will go all the way around and then leave me a little bit of tying ability. I want to tie a cute little bow. So that's my ribbon. And then, I'm going to start somewhere at the front and I'm going to push it in and out and in and out and in and out all the way around you could also weave up your yarn needle and do that it would be probably a lot faster but I like the feeling of the ribbon in my fingers there we go it's all the way through now and I can tie it into a little bow. Let's see how my bow tying skills are today. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, all right. <laughs> There's a little bow. I guess I could make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Anyway, little tiny bow. You can use ribbon or cord or even some braided yarn or just different yarn or textured yarn, whatever you might have lying around. This is, after all, a little scrap project. And they are just big enough for a small fistful size of candy. <laughs> Not a bad way to use up about 30 yards of scrap yarn. And of course, because Halloween is the weird and wonderful time that it is, you can get away with making these little treat bags out of the strange textured yarn you might have. Maybe the novelty yarns or the weirdly colored yarns that you don't really know what else to do with. And of course, a little treat bag full of snacks or goodies or some kind of treat is always a great pick-me-up for friends or family. It doesn't just have to go out the door to trick or treaters. We hope you enjoyed making these little treat bags along with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great Halloween. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe!